So this is probably the most important part of the whole site. This is the place where Shakespeare's house once stood. We know from previous archaeological investigations that the house just wasn't a square object at the front of the, of the site. It was a, a U-shape and his private dwelling quarters were at the back of the site where we're standing now. The whole area here is a listed park and garden, so we weren't allowed to just recreate Shakespeare's home, whether we knew what it looked like for sure or not. We had to superimpose elements of his property onto what is a registered park and garden. So we've done that in a really special way by setting out, and we'll set out in the grounds, bronze lines showing which part of the house was where on this site. So at the front of the site we have a gatehouse along the roadside and we're going to have a magnificent threshold coming into the site of uh, a door in bronze and oak. And then along the side of the property along the hedge were the service ranges. When we found the archaeology we found um, basically an oven and um, other other um, archaeological finds pertaining to sort of servicing and um, kind of kitchen, kitchen work. And then on, on the back of the site, in this big square here, would have been his domestic quarters. Inside the whole site would have been an internal courtyard. It's most of the elements, but it had, our, had the well in it, and that well does remain and is part of our design. So at this part of the site, we have a big circle that's all around us made of a horn beam. So this really is the most important part of the whole site. This is the place where Shakespeare had his house on his place. Not next door in Nash's house, where most people, many visitors think it was his house, but actually on this space, which has been a garden since 1749, and has become in its own right a registered parking garden and therefore important. We couldn't just rebuild his house, we had to, we had to um, put his house on the ground to show visitors without building a structure. And we've done that through art and through clever painting, creating a new garden and creating spaces on this part of the site where you sense the activity. So at this part of the site is his actual living quarters. We've created, we wanted to create a sense of a centre of historical inspiration. And we've done that by designing a set of hall And in the centre of the hall we've got the most splendid, beautiful artworks that have clearly been manipulated and influenced by a, a very high source. And that, in the table around it then, has been continued out in the so you get the sense of the source of inspiration and genius as influenced the rest of the site and the world beyond. So hard to imagine, I know, with all the work going on, but this is going to be the site of a really beautiful garden quite soon. In front of the circle of inspiration and the mind's eye, going towards the road, we've got an open courtyard with the well that was originally here when Shakespeare was here. We'll be recasting concrete and will become an integral part of our design for the long garden. There is a long garden of golden flowers coming from the gatehouse all the way into the site, all the way up to the circle. That's going to be clad in bronze and initially um, uh, in a retaining wall, so quite high off the ground, so people can really enjoy the flowers. And standard amongst the flowers are going to be flags and art pieces to denote the different plays that Shakespeare wrote. On the far side of the site was the old service range, and we found, when we did our archaeological dig, remains of what amounts to a fridge and an oven clearly showing that service range was used by quite a lot of servants to attend to this property.
So we've come through the side now and we're standing pretty much at the, at the juxtaposition between the, the outside courtyard and the gatehouse. Shakespeare would have had a very fine gatehouse gallery along the building line at the front of the site. And we're going to use that to um, include in our scheme a very grand doorway in bronze and oak so that our visitors can come across the threshold into Shakespeare's house from the front, from the painted front. And this gatehouse here, we've shown the, a slightly covered area, again in bronze, and more artwork studied around the site. Some of the artworks are absolutely exquisite. We're looking at um, a silver ship to represent the Tempest, a a globe, and our millery sphere to represent Shakespeare's place in the world and the universe at that time. And we also have um, a strong box showing money and important items that Shakespeare would have had locked away, including the exemplification of fine, which would have been the deed document to this property. And that's going to be on the first thing that our visitors will see, so that they understand very clearly from the outset that this property belonged to Shakespeare. A key part of this project has been the conservation works to Nash's house, which is completely separate in a way from the new build with the, um, our new place and the new garden. The work that has gone into the conservation of Nash's house has been really exemplary, really fine workmanship and over a period of time uh, you may have noticed that some of the panels have been taken down or each and every panel has been carefully taken down and reworked in oak and hempcrete and plaster to form what we hope will be a much more long-lived um, wall structure for Nash's house. Okay. You can see the scaffolding's gone across a lot of Nash's house now and we've, yeah. we've, we're working along the property. We've just reached the windows and we've taken the windows out and realised that actually the leaded lights need a, need a lot more conservation work than we originally planned. But other bits aren't required so we're, we're, we're changing um, around a little bit what we're doing at the moment and we're now focusing on our energy system and making sure the windows are really, really put back together perfectly.